What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together the most powerful PC I've ever been able to build on the channel. Now this thing is going to be an absolute beast, whether you want to do PC gaming at 4K or even emulation at 4K. And this will even do PS3 and Switch up to 4K resolutions with no issues whatsoever. So on the channel, I do a lot of low-end emulation on Android boxes, mini PCs, and things like that. But, you know, when it comes to my personal build, this is going to be it. I mean, I wanted to build something that I could basically run anything. And with the new release of God of War, I really wanted to do it at 4K, 60, or even over 60. So hopefully we'll be able to handle it with this one. For the CPU in the system, I went with the all-new Intel i9-12900K. We've got 16 cores, 24 threads, with amazing single-core and multi-core performance out of this chip. And for the GPU in the system, I went with the RTX 3080 Ti. Once this system is done, I'm still going to consider it a small form factor build, given the case that I'm using here. This is actually one of my favorites that I've built in recently. This is the Revolt 3. I had to pick up another one. You can get these in black and white, with or without a power supply. And as you can see, this is a vertical case, and it does support a three-slot GPU. I'm a huge fan of this thing, and I did opt for the included power supply, so it's a 750-watt STX. When it comes to RAM, I went with 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury. This is DDR5 running at up to 5400 megahertz. And when it comes to storage, I'm actually going to be using a 2 terabyte Kingston Renegade. I'm just waiting for it to come in. But for my placeholder, I went with an Enlin 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. Since this is a mini ITX build, obviously I had to go with a mini ITX motherboard, so I opted to use the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming ITX with Thunderbolt 4 built in. And I originally picked this up because I was going to do a small form factor build that you plugged an eGPU into, but, you know, with the cost of this, I figured I'd just go ahead and add it to the build. This isn't going to be a build tutorial video or anything like that. There's plenty of them on YouTube. I'm just going to go over some of the things I did to get everything installed, and then we're going to get right into some testing because I think that's the most important part. I'm really interested to see how this performs with newer AAA games and high-end emulation. And recently on the channel, we tested another Alder Lake with high-end emulation and no GPU. That was the 12600K. Does a great job, but you know, to go up to 4K with it, you definitely need some kind of dedicated GPU. The built-in UHD 770 graphics just won't cut it, but on the CPU side of things, these Alder Lake chips are definitely some of the best that I've tested for emulation. And uh, I don't think that the 12900K is going to be any different. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to play anything and everything with this chip here. The Revolt 3 case I'm using here does support up to a 280mm AIO, so I opted to use the MSI MagCooler C280. And to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if I can fit this in here. The case doesn't have much room, as you can see here with the Revolt 3, but with some tube management, we might be able to make it fit. And since this is a vertical case, all of our I.O. from the motherboard is on the bottom, but we do have plenty of room to route our cables. So I've got the cooler installed, I just need to do some cable management and install the GPU, but it looks like we're going to be able to make this fit. Now, I haven't test fit it with the GPU installed, so that might be an issue, but it looks like we will have enough room with this mag cooler. And with a little bit of finesse, I was able to fit everything inside of here. I think it turned out pretty nicely. I wish there was better cable management with this unit, but uh, some zip ties will get you by. It's just a very tight case when you have all these parts in it. And it's still pretty portable. I mean, it's definitely larger than some other PC builds that I've done, but we do have some pretty major parts in here. On the top, it does have a handle, pops right out, and there's this little slide out right here that'll act as your headphone hanger. So yeah, it's got a few neat features built in, but now it's time to test this thing out. Alright, so here we are. I've been up and running for a little while without any issues. I've installed a bunch of games, some benchmarks, and some emulators that we're going to be testing out. Give you a rundown. As you can see, we have that 12900K, 16 cores, 24 threads, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5400 megahertz. I did turn XMP on in the BIOS. And we have that RTX 3080 Ti. I mean, right off the bat, we already know this thing's going to perform really well, but the first thing I always like to do is just run a few benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5. Remember, this is at the stock clocks. I haven't messed around with Intel tuning utility or anything in the BIOS at all. Single core, 1,998. Multi, 18,478. Absolutely ridiculous scores on the single and the multi. When it comes to Cinebench R23, total multi-core score, 27,492. Again, really awesome score. So I went ahead and moved over to some GPU benchmarks. Here we have 3D Mark Firestrike, 
40,098, and finally, Time Spy with a 19,776. So obviously, this thing's putting out some really good CPU performance, single core, multi core, and some really awesome GPU performance, given that we have that RTX 3080 Ti. But these are benchmarks, now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. And first up, we have Forza Horizon 5, 4K Extreme with resolution scaling set to Ultra. Looks absolutely amazing on this display here, and I'm getting an average of 93 FPS. I personally play this game every single day on the Xbox Series X, and it definitely turns it into a whole different game when you're running it on a system like this. Going into Halo Infinite, I actually thought we'd do a little better than this. I mean, it's definitely playable like this. I'm not complaining at all, but I thought we'd get a higher FPS. I got an average of 81 FPS, 4K Ultra out of this one. Always like to throw at least one fighting game in, so here's Injustice 2. 4K, we're maxed out here in the settings, and every once in a while, I do see it dip down to 59. It's a little weird. I'm not sure what's going on. I guess it's optimizations with the game itself. Doom Eternal, Ultra Nightmare settings, 4K. We got an average of 127 FPS. Totally playable like this, and it looks absolutely amazing. Cyberpunk 2077 is just one of those games that tears up most hardware, and here we are at 4K Ultra Ray Tracing, and I only got an average of 63 FPS out of this. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have God of War for PC. This is such a good port, and it really just came out, so there will be some more fixes and stuff coming on down the road. I played through this game two times on the PS4 Pro, but bringing it up to 4K over 60 with those ultra settings really does this game justice, and it turns it into one of the best looking games I've ever seen. So with it set up like this, I got an average of 88 FPS. This is more than enough. And you know, when I'm playing this normally, I would probably just go ahead and lock V-Sync on at 60 with it. Now it's time to move over to some high-end emulation, and I knew going into this we'd have some amazing performance out of basically everything. I also tested the Switch emulator Yuzu, you won't see any gameplay here, but you can basically run any game as long as it's compatible with the emulator at 4K over 60. Here we have Xbox 360 using Xenia, this is Red Dead, and we're at 60. This is really hard to run on a PC, and with that 12900K, it's definitely possible. Using RPCS3, 4K Vulcan, Skate 3, looking great, and it really comes down to that CPU performance. This game does take a lot of CPU. As you can see, we're pulling 100 watts from this 12900K running this game. I knew the GPU wouldn't have any issues at 4K. Even the 1660 can do this. You just need a really nice CPU. It loves cores and threads. Skate 3 is a harder one to emulate. But we can take it up a little more to God of War 3, which is just one that I've never been able to run at 60 FPS on any PC build that I've ever done or pre-built. This is just one of those games that really takes advantage of those extra cores and threads, and with the 12900K, it's looking great, but we still get some dips. This is the best performance that I've been able to get out of this game using RPCS 3, and it comes down to that CPU. So with that MAG C280 cooler that I used, it did much better than I thought it would, especially given that we have such a small form factor case. It's really compact in here, but at idle we averaged 30 degrees Celsius. For emulation and gaming across the board, we only averaged 61 degrees Celsius, and the maximum that this CPU hit was 88 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench R23. Another thing I usually test with smaller PCs is total system power consumption, and going into this, I wasn't trying to build a low power system at all. I knew it was going to be a lot. 
At idle, we average 68 watts. While gaming, we average 310 watts. This is total system power consumption from the wall. I've got it plugged into a kilowatt meter. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the GPU and the CPU was 680 watts. So this machine is definitely pulling a lot of power. Overall, this is definitely the most powerful gaming slash emulation PC I've ever been able to put together on the channel. I mean, we definitely have enough power to basically do anything at 4K and above with emulation. When it comes to the lower end stuff like PSP, GameCube, Wii, we can go past 4K, no problem at all. As long as the emulator supports upscaling past 4K, it's going to do it. Now we did see God of War 3 dipping down every once in a while, but like I mentioned, that was the best performance that I've ever been able to get out of any system that I've ever tested with the RPCS3 emulator. It really comes down to the emulator right now and not the hardware I'm using. In the future, it's probably going to work much better on lower end systems, but I really wanted to get something that I could push everything to the maximum with. And this system here is definitely capable of doing it in a smaller form factor case. Now, it's not the smallest gaming PC that I've put together on the channel, but it's still a lot smaller than some of the other tower desktops that we've taken a look at. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in putting something like this together or something similar, I will leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.